We present VisLink, Revealing Relationships Amongst Visualizations, a joint work between Christopher Collins of the University of Toronto and Sheila Carpendale of the University of Calgary. This work was presented at the IEEE Information Visualization Conference in 2007. When exploring data, we often use more than one representation. We may also look at a visualization of data alongside the original source. We can also look at different visualizations of different data sets and compare amongst them. The question that the VisLink visualization attempts to answer is what are the relationships across different views of the same data, across different relationships in the same data set, and across multiple relationships and multiple data sets. This is the VisLink visualization in which any number of 2D visualizations are placed on planes which float in a 3D space. Adjacent planes are connected by, by 3D bundled edges. Shortcuts and constrained widgets add usability and enable powerful intervisualization queries. Multiple relation visualizations have been explored in the past, including individual visualizations in which comparisons are made manually, coordinated view visualizations in which brushing and linking are used to do interactive highlighting across different representations of the data, compound graph visualizations in which the spatial structure is based on a single primary relationship within the data and the secondary relationships are drawn atop it, the semantic substrates visualization in which a data set is subdivided into semantically meaningful subsets and relationships are drawn within and across subsets of the data, and finally the new VisLink visualization in which any number of 2D visualizations are placed in a 3D space and the relationships are drawn across. We have found that the VisLink visualization can be made equivalent to all previously listed forms of multiple relationship visualization. By comparing side by side, we can do independent comparison. With brushing and linking, we can make coordinated views. By pushing two planes together, we can have a compound graph. And finally, we can extend the planes apart to make the VisLink visualization. Let's now explore the VisLink visualization in detail. We will use examples from a lexical data set, the WordNet is a hierarchy, and similarity clustering based on a force-directed layout of word similarity. We are interested in what is the relationship across these visualizations. VisLink uses bundled 3D edges, which are made using the Chaikin corner cutting algorithm. Edges are transparent, so bundles become more opaque. Edges are directed, with orange being the source node and green being the destination point. Interacting with component visualizations is always equivalent to 2D. Mouse events are translated into plane relative coordinates, so the underlying visualization can interpret them the same as if the visualization was not being used within VisLink. Also, visualization planes may be swung forward to an equivalent to 2D view. Let's explore how the interplane edges are created. First, we will take two visualization planes and populate them with lexical data, the tree representation and the semantic similarity clusters. You can see we can interact with the individual visualizations, for example, by zooming out on the semantic clusters. We've activated one of the planes, showing the edges between them, and now we're exploring in the 3D space. We can look at the tree graph in a 2D view. We can zoom back out and look at the clustering graph in a 2D view we can still interact with the individual visualizations just as if they were standalone applications. Edge congestion is a potential difficulty with VisLink. We provide for edge filtering using Zoom. Only edges whose source and target nodes are currently visible are shown. By zooming in on an individual plane, we filter out all of the edges that are connected to nodes that are no longer visible. We also provide for interactive filtering of edges. Interplane edges may be shown by activating all of the edges attached to a single plane, or they may be shown through activating only those edges that are attached to nodes that match a current search filter. Because interaction with VisLink is done in a 3D space with a 2D mouse, we provide for constrained interaction. Visual widgets, such as our book opening widget, accordion translation widget,
and garage door widget allow for restricted motion of plane relative positions. We also provide hints for 3D navigation, including function keys that allow you to view the visualization from the default view, from the top, the side, in planes open and adjacent, in a book view, a book view from the top, and we'll return to the original default view. With VisLink, we introduce the technique of spreading activation. Nodes have a level of activation that is indicated by the transparency of the orange node background. Nodes may be fully activated through selecting a node on a plane or if a node matches a search query. Fully activated nodes are also indicated by a green halo around the node edge. Node activation will propagate through interplane edges reflecting between planes with an exponential drop-off with each reflection. So fully activated nodes will propagate an edge to the opposite plane and then that node will become activated but to a lesser extent. This enables intervisualization queries. Edge transparency is relative to the source node activation. Let's examine an example of spreading activation in use. If we have a first visualization, which is the alphabetic clustering of words, and this provides no information about the synonymy relationships in the dataset, and we have a second visualization, which consists of a tree graph in which every node is a set of synonyms, but in this set visualization we have no information about alphabetic organization, how can we use spreading activation to see the synonyms in visualization 1, the alphabetic view? Here is the procedure for using spreading activation to make a discovery in the dataset. First, we select a word on the first plane, which are the similarity clusters. Using spreading activation, edges will propagate to the synonym sets on the second plane. Reflected edges will then propagate back, revealing the synonyms in the alphabetic clusters. Here is how this looks in a video. On the first plane, we select a synonym set. Edges are propagated back and forth using spreading activation. Here you can see the varying transparency level of the edges, indicating the varying activation level. If we zoom in and look at one of the planes, we can see that secondary nodes have been activated using spreading activation, indicated by the varying transparency of the orange background. We can also see the same on the second plane. On nodes that were activated through spreading activation. To demonstrate the extensibility of VisLink, we have used it to link existing visualizations, including a tree map of the occupations of members of Congress of the United States, a scatter plot indicating individual members' fundraising success, and a map of the United States indicating the zip codes that elected members represent. Here we see those three visualizations placed on VisLink planes in the 3D space. We can zoom in on each individual plane or rotate within the space. If we select the journalist node, we will see edges propagate across from journalists to their fundraising success and to the locations in the United States where journalists were elected. We can see that journalists were not particularly successful fundraisers. We can change the range of the center graph to expand the area in which journalists were successfully fundraising and find where exactly the most successful fundraising journalist was elected. These visualizations came with the Prefuse Visualization Toolkit and were imported without any changes. VisLink has been implemented using the Prefuse Visualization Toolkit, in which existing visualizations can be incorporated without changes. Interplane edges are simply defined by setting plane and node index pairs. This is augmented with a Java OpenGL Toolkit for rendering in the 3D space. There are some perceptual considerations to take into account while using VisLink. First, not all layouts are equal. 
In informal testing, we found that it was easier to see the connection points of interplane edges to graphs such as node link graphs or scatter plots, and more difficult with space filling visualizations such as a tree map. Second, the colors of the interplane edges may interact with the colors on component visualizations. We use an orange to green color scheme, and if a component visualization has orange or green on it, it may be more difficult to see the interplane edges. We provide for a facility to customize the color of the interplane edges depending on the component visualizations. Finally, there may be an issue with 3D perspective bias. It's important for any analyst using VisLink to view the visualization from the top, the side, and the various default views to ensure that perspective bias is avoided where possible. Research on the VisLink visualization system is ongoing. We would like to acknowledge our colleagues and our funding sponsors for their support.